we want to simplify the given exponential expressions using the exponent rules given here on the right. And because we have quotients, we'll mainly be applying this rule here that states a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n equals a to the power of m minus n. So if the bases are the same and we're dividing, we subtract the exponents, and it's always the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. But we're also working with negative exponents, so let's go ahead and review this rule and this rule as well. One divided by a to the power of negative m equals a to the power of positive m. One way to think of this is to put a to the m in fraction form by putting it over one, and then if we have an exponential expression, if we move it across the fraction bar, in this case up, it'll change the sign of the exponent. And the next rule is just an extension of this. a to the power of negative n divided by b to the power of negative m equals b to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. Notice here the bases are not the same, and therefore we cannot subtract the exponents, but we can change the sign of the exponents by moving them across the fraction bar. If we move b to the power of negative m up, it becomes b to the power of positive m. If we move a to the power of negative n down, it becomes a to the power of positive n. So looking at our first example, notice how the bases are the same, and we're dividing, so we subtract the exponents. This is equal to two raised to the power of four minus two. Of course, four minus two is two, so this is equal to two squared, or two times two, which is equal to four. Before we go to the next example, though, let's explain what's happening here when we subtract two. If we expand two to the fourth, that would be four factors of two. If we expand two squared, that would be two factors of two. Notice here we have common factors between the numerator and denominator. We have two over two and two over two. That would simplify to one, leaving us with two times two, or four. So notice how by subtracting this two here, we're actually simplifying out the common factors between the numerator and denominator. Let's go and take a look at our next example. Here we have three to the third divided by three to the power of negative three. Again, the bases are the same and we're dividing, so that would be three to the power of three minus the exponent in the denominator of negative three, which of course becomes three to the power of three plus three, or three to the sixth. Let's show how we can evaluate this on a calculator. Type in the base. This key here is the exponent key, often called the caret. So three raised to the power of six, and then enter. Three to the sixth is equal to 729. Next we have five to the power of negative two divided by five to the power of negative one. Again, we're dividing, so we subtract the exponents. This would be five to the power of negative two minus negative one which becomes five to the power of negative two plus one, or just five to the power of negative one. It's not considered simplified if the expression contains a negative exponent. So to make this exponent positive, we can think of this as being in fraction form. And if we move five to the power of negative one down to the denominator, it'll become five to the power of positive one. So we'd have one divided by five to the power of positive one but an exponent of positive one is not needed. If there is no exponent, it's assumed as positive one. So this is equal to just one-fifth. And finally, our last example, we have four to the fourth divided by four to the fourth. So we have four raised to the power of four minus four, which would be four to the zero power. Anything to the zero power except zero to the zero is equal to one. And hopefully this makes sense because Anything divided by itself is always equal to one as long as we don't have zero divided by zero. I hope you found this helpful.